Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Continuing a short series on drills that I find useful for red dot handguns, uh, developing skill and, and uh, practicing with the red dot handguns, we're going to talk about fast. You're probably familiar with this drill, even if you didn't know it by name or know where it came from. Fundamental Accuracy and Speed Test, uh, brought to us by the incomparable Todd Green. What I like about this drill is it incorporates a number of different steps into the handgun and it has graduated uh, benchmarks, if you will, part times uh, for achievement to measure your progress. What we're looking at is a drill that's shot on a 3x5 card and an 8 inch plate. I make one modification to the drill. I shoot it on a 3x5 card and a 4x6 A zone. That's my standard A zone size that I use for almost all the classes that I teach. I like that A zone for A zone standards. I feel like the, the 8 inch uh, eight inch score zone is reasonable. Uh, it's very achievable, but I like to hold myself to a consistent standard from drill to drill to drill to drill. So that is one uh, change I do make to the drill. However, you can definitely shoot it on the 3x5 card and the 8 inch, uh, eight inch plate. That's no big deal. This drill uh, is kind of graduated. Uh, if you can shoot it in 10 seconds or 10 seconds above, that's kind of a benchmark for it's an intermediate performance, or not even an intermediate performance. That's kind of a beginner's performance. If you can shoot it under five seconds, that's considered to be expert performance. And if you go online and you look at some of the competition forums and, and websites, you'll see that there's a, a great number of people out there who discuss and dissect this drill and talk about its value. So I'm going to talk about what I find value about it. First thing uh, is it measures consistency for draw stroke and precise dot placement for what I consider to be a pretty precise point of aim. Yeah, it's a three by five card. But if we're factoring in the time limit you give yourself in order to shoot two rounds at that 3x5 card, uh, that's a bit challenging. And then we immediately have to change our point of aim, drag it down to a secondary point of aim, in this case a high thoracic score zone. For me, it's the 4x6 A zone. And then after reloading from slide lock, I have to load four round magazine and fire four more rounds. So the total drill from the holster, two shots to the head, gun goes to slide lock because that's a two round magazine. Dump magazine, reload, four rounds. Now, you get handicaps depending on how you start it. So, if you start it from a duty holster versus from concealment, you have some different handicap part-times you can play with. I personally just kind of ignore those altogether. I'm always striving for at least sub six seconds from concealment. Ideally, I want to be able to do that cold. And the thing about cold shooting a drill cold is you can only shoot one drill cold when you get to the range. Yeah, you can shoot, you know, say shoot 10, 10, 10, what we talked about in the last video, and then shoot fast and then shoot something else. But cold first rounds down range is to me is a very accurate measurement of where I'm at in performance for that particular standard. So first thing I do when I get to the range is I set it up, I do a three by five card, my four by six A zone, and I go ahead, load two rounds in the gun, holster up, and then a four round spare magazine. And I'm shooting that from concealment and I'm striving for that sub five second time. But I know realistically, even though I'm always pushing myself, I'm probably not gonna get it first day out. Very rarely does that happen. Usually I'm in the seven, sometimes even eight second range, depending on uh, just what my cold skills are looking like that day. So here is a cold run. That's certainly a respectable time considering everything that's going on. I have to draw, acquire a precise dot presentation, fire two rounds, then I have to perform a reload, lose history with my sight pitcher, lose history with my target, then draw, then press the gun back out, reestablish my shooting grip, and fire four rounds of what I consider to be cadent shooting in order to try to achieve it quickly. I could slow fire the whole thing, but that's not necessarily the point. On my very second attempt, right after that cold attempt, I was able to considerably improve my time just by warming up with six rounds. The 
The road to sub five seconds is a long, arduous, and difficult journey that can be analogous to maybe the fellowship of the ring for some shooters. I find consistently it's much more achievable from a duty holster, even cold, for me to get sub five seconds. From concealment, there's a lot of things going on, and I feel like if you're gonna shoot it for concealment, you don't necessarily wanna cheat yourself. You don't have to go with the Mickey Mouse surrender starting position. I don't feel like the starting position is that important as long as the gun is concealed because that's the standard we're holding ourselves to. We also want to make sure that our spare magazine is concealed because that would be cheating as well. I do a very minimalist draw when I'm going for this standard, which means very minimal movement to, to purchase the gun and purchase a spare magazine. Cover garment matters as well. I generally like to do stuff like this with button-ups, but t-shirt because, I should say, t-shirts I find are a little bit easier. And because I wear both, why not go with the more aggravating garment? Uh, in order to perform this correctly, really where people lose their time is on that reload. And reloading from concealment is somewhat complicated because you're doing it from concealment draw stroke, but you're always doing it one-handed. I mean, I guess you could use two hands, but that's not only unsafe, but also stupid. So my spare magazine is coming from concealment with a one-handed draw. So my one-handed draw technique that I apply to my handgun from concealment also needs to apply to my spare ammunition. Right after my sub six second run, I started trying to get that sub five second. And it's only a second, right? Shouldn't be that big of a deal. It actually is. It took me about five, I think, yeah, five attempts in order to break the, the sub five. And for me, depending on what I'm working on, um, where I'm at, how my hands are feeling, uh, that's pretty standard. I, I'm not saying I can't achieve it first draw of the day sub five second, but it's inconsistent. I'll get it two times in a row maybe, and then I won't get it for you know three or four attempts and I start getting it again. Uh, maybe, and this is, an, this is something that's been brought up by somebody else who constantly or consistently shoots this drill as well, I'm holding myself to an unrealistic accuracy standard for those four rounds after the reload, being a 4x6 Vox uh, versus the standard scoring zone. Uh, I don't really necessarily agree with that. I think that a 4x6 box is a more realistic, anatomically speaking, A zone for the high thoracic cavity is perfectly reasonable for cadence fire. I just have to get my sight picture in that box from that seven yard distance and I'm gonna be able to get those four rounds in there. Uh, five rounds, six rounds, seven rounds, eight rounds, depending on how good my grip is, that might be a little bit more difficult, but four rounds, definitely achievable. And I think it demonstrated that by being able to shoot that in that sub five second range. Someday, and because we're always working on personal improvement, someday I'll be able to do it consistently cold. But for right now, it, it happens occasionally. Once I warm up, I can stay consistently sub five second. My goal is to be able to sh show up to the range, put two rounds in the gun, four rounds in a spare magazine, set the target up, hit the timer, hear the beep, and shoot it cold. And then come into the range the next time and do it again and do it again and do it again. That way I feel like I've got the concepts and principles ingrained in me. One thing we do want to avoid, even though I'm talking about drills you can use, is becoming a slave to the drill. Try to vary things as much as possible, incorporate as much different stuff into your practice, and occasionally just shoot freestyle. Just Come up with something right there in your head, a standard if you will, and do it. One thing I like to do, and I actually have this in my range bag, is I have some laminated 3x5 cards that just have different drills or different standards written on them. And if I feel like, hey, I've got an extra 20 or 30 rounds, I'll take those cards and just thumb out three of them randomly. And then I have six drills that I can choose from. I still give myself a little bit of variety, but I'm holding myself to a standard that maybe I didn't want to shoot. Sometimes I thumb those things out and it's like support hand only 25 yards and I'm just like, ah. I don't want to do this, but the cards make me. Uh, they hold me to a standard that I didn't necessarily get to set for myself for that day for those purposes. So that's something useful as well. Uh, you will find fast to be a very useful drill. Limited round count. We're only shooting six rounds per attempt, especially these days right now, ammunition is still a little bit hard to come by. So you can get a lot out of those six rounds. You can also break this down with dry fire as well and then take it to the range and kind of uh, test to the dry fire and see how well you do. For red dot specific purposes, this definitely, uh, I guess I should reiterate, focuses on that initial dot acquisition for speed. 
reacquisition of the dot after reload, and management of the dot during cadence fire. Six rounds, total seven yards, two rounds in the three by five card, and then four rounds in either the eight inch standard or for me, the four by six. If you wanna shoot it on the four by six and you don't wanna order the same targets I do, no big deal. You can go to the Sage Dynamics website and download the cadence standards target, which is a, the gray box on that target is four by six. Uh, the internal box, a little bit smaller, and if you really wanna push yourself, try to do two and then your four round cadence into that smaller box from the standard of seven yards. I'm Eric Cowell with Sage Dynamics, train accordingly.